Hello! Today I'm going to be teaching you the basics of audio editing using a free service called Audacity. Now you can download Audacity at the link provided, and then follow along with me as I create a tutorial for your finale. I've also created a video to give to your students to give them a few practices and procedures on how to create clean, crisp audio without building a sound studio in their home. Let's get started, shall we? Once you've downloaded, installed, and opened the Audacity software, this is the workspace screen you should be seeing. Now, for all intents and purposes today, we are just going to jump right in and start building your finale. But for those of you who are a little more curious, there are several great YouTube tutorials on the basic features and functions of Audacity, but for our purposes, it'll be easier to learn by doing. Now, hopefully by this point, you have students sending you their finished recordings, and you've hopefully been saving all of those recordings to the same file folder. So let's begin by importing those files. Now, to do that, you'll take your cursor up to the File toolbar, click, scroll down to Import, and over to Audio. Now you'll notice that there also is a shortcuts key to this by holding down the Control, Shift, and I keys. We'll bring you to this box. Now I've used Audacity before, so my file, Students Singing, is already preloaded, but you may need to browse a little bit to find your specific file folder where you've been keeping your files. Today's tutorial will be on 76 trombones, in Meredith Wilson's Music Man. You'll notice that I have two different files here. The first one is the song with vocals. Now this is the track that I've sent to the children. Uh, my students, I like to send them the vocal track so that when they record, they can listen to it in their headphones, they hear the words, and they hear the pitches. So this saves them from going off pitch or forgetting the words. But what we're going to be using is just the instrumental tracks today, so we will select the second file. Now it looks like about 18 of my students have recorded files for me. We're going to go one student at a time, so I'm going to hold down the control key and select student number one and open. Now in Audacity you can see that I have the full song of 76 Trombone's instrumental track, and I have just the solo of my first student singing. Now we're not going to need the song right away, so I'm going to go ahead and mute that. And I'm going to scroll down to student number one, where we're going to do a couple of things before we actually plug in the song. Uh, first is I'm going to normalize their voice. Now every student is a little bit different. Some are closer to the microphone, some are far away. We want all of our students to pretty much be the same volume. So to do that, we are going to double click, turn the entire song white, go up to Effect, down to Normalize. Now the default is to be negative one decibel. Let's go ahead and bump that up to negative three. Click OK. And you can see instantly that our loud singer has been brought down just a little bit so that every singer will be pretty much exactly the same volume. Next, I've asked each of your students to take about 10 seconds of room tone. This is everything that's playing in the background that our ears naturally forget are happening. It's things that um, your refrigerator, your air conditioner, low frequency hums that we've tuned out as a human race, but that microphones pick up. So we're going to go ahead and take some of that room tone by clicking and dragging, going up to our effect column, down to noise reduction, and follow step one. Step one is to get a noise profile. Well, we just did that. We selected this area of dead silence. So go ahead and click Get. Now we're going to double click, pick out the whole song, back to Effect, down to Noise Reduction. And 12 decibels is the default. Let's go ahead and bump that up to between 30 and 35. Because let's face it, children are a bit noisy. So click OK. And you'll see afterwards that these little blips have kind of leveled out. We've gotten rid of the low tones and frequencies. So in this song, there's about 40 seconds where Harold Hill is singing a solo, and then our chorus comes in at the end of the song. So all of this dead 40 seconds we don't really need. So I'm going to click and drag, and then on my keyboard I'm going to hit the backspace button and get rid of all of that dead air. So now I just have the children singing. 
but it's at the beginning of the song, and I know that the children are singing at the end of the song. So up here beside the record button are a different couple of functions. We are currently on the selection tool. We want to be on the time shift tool. So go ahead and click that. And now we can slide our vocals anywhere throughout the song. Now I know that when the chorus comes in in this song, it's right after the horn section goes, bum, ba, bum, ba, bum, ba, bum, ba, bum, bum. So I think that might be right around here. So I'm going to come up, unmute, and quick play by clicking right above where the green arrow is. Perfect. We'll stop there. And we can slide our child back and forth. Now, I'm going to zoom in. So I'm going to go back up to functions. And right beside the time shift is the zoom key. And we'll zoom in right before the horns and a little bit after the horns. Now I think, bum, ba, bum, ba, bum, ba, bum, ba, bum, bum, I think we come in right about here. I could be wrong. I'm gonna hit my time shift and slide over to where I think my child starts singing. Now this is not an exact science. You may have to slide back and forth a little bit, keep zooming in closer and closer until you get it relatively perfect. But I'm pretty sure that this is where the child starts singing. So I'm gonna zoom back out to the whole song. That's over here on the right hand side, these different zooms. This one is for the entire project. So we'll click that and here we are again. And let's go back and quick play right before those horns. Hey, we did pretty good. Look at that. So now we have effectively, for one student, normalized their voice, taken out their room tone, and found exactly where in the song they needed to be placed. So let's go ahead and start our student number two. We go back to our file column, down to import, over to audio, and select student number two. Now that we know what we're doing, we can take it a little bit faster. Let's go back to our selection key, double click, effects, normalize. It's already pre-registered at negative three decibels, so let's just hit OK. Look at that, he's the same volume as the first child. Let's take some of their room tone, go to effect, noise reduction, get the profile, double click, now for the whole song, effect, noise reduction, it's already preloaded, OK. Take out those low frequencies. Let's go ahead and drag all of the parts where we know our child is not singing, backspace. Go back up to the slide. And now, because our first child, we know exactly where they started singing, we can snap to, see that yellow line right there? We can snap to the exact same point. And now, if we go back to the song and do a quick play, both of our children should be singing at exactly the same time. Let's find out. We did pretty good. Look at you, you're a natural. Let's say we have one student that is not a strong singer. Maybe their tonality is a little bit off. And you want them to be included, but you don't want them to be as heard as the rest of the students. So let's say my student number one has a little bit of a pitch problem. I can come over here to the left hand side, it says L, R, plus, minus, and we'll just take this and slide it down a little bit to make their voice a little less heard than everyone else's voice. So when I play, you can hear, they're not singing quite as loud, but they are still singing. <laughs> 76 at the So now you have your stronger singers singing a little bit louder and your weaker singers, you can blend them into the background. But you still have all of your singers singing, which will make parents very happy. So let's go up to File, scroll down to Export, and I like to export as a WAV file, that's just me personally. I'm going to save this as the tutorial. And then I like to add the word hero. That way I know when I'm looking, oop, hero number one, when I'm looking for it later, that this is the file that I want to use when I'm recording on the Zoom call. So let's go ahead and save that. 
your tracks will be mixed down and exported as one stereo file. Yes, we want one file. That's exactly what we want. And yep, everything looks great here. Okay. So now you have a finished product for your finale that is saving to your computer. So next time you have a Zoom call with your students, you can play the track with their vocals and they can mouth along and you can record to that screen. Then you'll have a complete product and a great show.